Over the last 30 years, if NFL Films has done a feature about the Raiders, there's a good chance we interviewed Phil Villapiano for the piece. Blessed with a gregarious personality, Phil's always good for a great bite or story about an old coach or teammate. John Madden. He goes, guys, we're going to shove it down your throat no matter what. Since he's such a great interview subject, we make it a point to sit down with Phil almost every year. This is perfect. This is perfect. So what are we talking about, man? Talk Vegas? Vegas. Talking about you. Me? You. You gonna talk about me? <laughs> I'm not royalty, but thank you. This is wonderful. Besides being a soundbite machine, Villapiano was also a Pro Bowl linebacker on the great Oakland teams of the 1970s. He was so beloved, Raiders fan Tom Hanks used the name Villapiano in his movie, That Thing You Do. Villapiano's was the spaghetti place out by the airport where the Wonders played their first gig. Tom Hanks, he sends a nice letter and he says, your dad was my favorite Raider and I called him Phil Villapiano Piano. He's great, man. I, I, Tom Hanks is my favorite actor. Phil was the embodiment of what a Raider should be, a Hellraiser. Holy Toledo, it's a free for all! Who played hard both on and off the field. After practice every day, we would go to the Hilton and have quadruple Chevis on the rocks. Take a couple of, ah, oh, tasted great, you know. A relentless competitor with overflowing energy, Phil was the emotional leader of Oakland's misfit machine a runaway train loaded with loons who liked to push the limits of fair play. I don't think we were dirty. I just think we were aggressive, but that's the way I like it. We hit him and we laughed. He'll knock you round and upside down and laugh when he's conquered and won. <laughs> the seeds of Villapiano's aggressive nature were sown while growing up in the blue-collar Jersey Shore town of Asbury Park. There were so many kids in Asbury, it was nuts. And everybody loved football. We played hard and it was passionate. I just loved to tackle, loved to hit. After school one day, my mother says, you love that game, don't you? And I said, yeah, I love it. And then she said, do you know you can do that when you grow up? That could be your job. And I went, what? That day on, I never stopped thinking about being a pro football player. Despite being undersized, Phil led Asbury Park to a state title. He later became a standout at Bowling Green, and by his senior year, had a real shot at fulfilling his dream. I get invited to the senior bowl game. Guy puts his elbow up, hits me right in the eye, my eyes totally shut. Coach McPherson, he goes, you know we have no backups. <laughs> I'm like, I'll worry about me, baby. I'm ready to play. I crushed it. I might have made 25 tackles that day. I'm coming off the field, and this guy comes up to me. He goes, hey, Filipino, white suit on. I didn't know who he was. He goes, nice game. That was the one and only time I heard from the Raiders. Draft day, we're having this party. Everybody's telling me. I'm going to get drafted in the first or second round. 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 7.30 at night. The guy calls up and goes, Phil, this is Ron Wolf. Just would like to tell you you've been drafted by the Oakland Raiders. So I go, well, Mr. Wolf, what round was I drafted? And he goes, second. I said, what took you so long? Feeling overlooked, Phil decided to make a strong first impression. Tight end, you see. Excellent. Excellent reaction. <laughs> Always thinking football. The coaches couldn't help but notice his hitting ability. And Villapiano quickly became a starter. We're going to play Monday night in Cleveland. Al Davis tells me Leroy Kelly. If he puts that hand down, he's going that way. If he puts this hand down, he's going that way. I tackled him over there, over there, over there. That was the greatest tip he ever gave me. How it goes so? He picked up on Villa Piano, he picked up on Bowling Green, and he put the two on the map. Villa Piano, Bowling Green, you know what I mean? However he said it. 
No longer anonymous, Phil became a key part of the Raiders' defense and helped Oakland win five consecutive division titles from 1972 to 76. The lightning-quick linebacker loved to blaze across the badlands of the NFL to take down his prey. The bigger, the better. I got to tackle sweetness. I'll take you down. I want to fight you. One of my favorites, Don Mater does a little head fake, and he comes back to the inside, and I went, boom! And I caught him with my little pad here. Boom! He dropped. Poor Don Mater. But too bad. <laughs> <laughs> Phil never lost a fight. It's tough to lose when you have a devastating weapon at your disposal. George Anderson, who is our trainer, lays plaster Paris around my arm, and then you tape over the top of that. So what I got here is, is, is a club. You know, you go after their legs, and these guys are in full stride. I mean, they could break that tackle easy because these guys got big legs, but they never could get away from the rake. If I got him in the throat, then you go like this. And if you snap the helmet off, can't open it. Today, hits like these make us cringe. But back in the 70s, they were legal. I love the tackle, but you cannot play pro football if you can't think. And you gotta think on your feet. It's really cool when they come out in something and you change coverages on a fly and then it worked. You pick one off or something, you know? Bethard back to pass, setting up deep, looks to throw the screen, intercepted by Villapiano. Phil Villapiano, good heady ball player, not a bowling green. That play didn't fool okay. Phil Villapiano. That's what I loved about football. That's when I became the best football player I could be. From the Rose Bowl Stadium in Pasadena, California, it is Super Bowl XI. Phil's brains and brawn meshed perfectly in the biggest game of his life. Second and goal on the two. The Raiders with their goal line defense in. They take out the wide receivers and bring in two more offensive tackles. We called that jumbo. They had one play out of this. I'm yelling to our guys, we got them where we want them. We got them where we want them. Second down, two to go for the Vikings. Back and it gives to McClanahan, snowball! There's a scramble, he may have been a fumble! Oakland recovers! Holy Toledo! Great play made by Phil Bolipiano. A shot right by Yeri. Bam! The ball come out, it was so cool. I got to the sideline, and Madden comes over to me, and he goes, you okay? He goes, Tate is telling me you're screaming, we got him where we want him on the two-yard line. And I looked at coach, I said, we did. And he goes. The forced fumble was the turning point of Super Bowl XI. After the turnover, Oakland reeled off 19 unanswered points and rolled to victory. Joined that Super Bowl club. It's so cool to be a part of that. Just as Villapiano was entering his prime, his career took a sudden turn when he injured his knee in 1977. Phil overcame the injury and turned in two more productive campaigns. But in 1980, the outspoken linebacker got into hot water with Al Davis. He announced that we were going to L.A. and I had a few too many beers and I decided to tell everybody I won't go. And I get a call from Al and he says, I need a wide receiver. I'm looking at that guy, Bobby Chandler. I know you played with him in a Pro Bowl game. Could he be a good Raider? You know, he's pretty good. You're going to have to give up somebody pretty good for him. He goes, yeah, I, I got that all worked out. I go, well, who? He goes, you. <laughs> In Buffalo, Phil was a veteran leader who played mostly on special teams. But in 1981, he got a chance to start a few games late in the season. Villapiano was so respected 
that the Bills sent him out for the coin toss alone before each game. Although slowed by a pair of bad knees, Villapiano flashed some of the old brilliance that made him a star in Oakland. It's intercepted. Phil Villapiano with the interception. After 13 years, Phil decided to call it a career. You know, you talk about the power to brain. I'm a little skinny kid from Asbury Park, but I made it. And I made it all the way to the top because I loved it and I thought about it and I thought about it and I thought about it and bam, it happened. I could have never written this script. I've been totally blessed. Made my life, man, just made my life. So that's, uh, that's me.